It's actually a myth that a good salesperson has the gift of the gab. A good salesperson, by the way, knows how to listen. Listen and listen. And if you listen long enough, that client can close themselves. The good salesperson knows whilst listening how to direct that conversation to elicit needs and wants. Once you've got those needs and wants, values, the good salesman knows how then to create value by pitching his features and benefits of his product against the personal needs and wants of the client, moulding them together to create value. The good salesman knows how to test the sale before you make the close, just to make sure. Because you should never get to a situation when you close and that client says no. You should either know that that client's not on board and do more work or back off. And you're backing off him a test close. And lastly, the good salesman knows how to f set up future business. The good salesperson <coughs> is always talking to the customer about the, about the future. Because we are going to be long-term business associates. We have a relationship. It's an unwritten relationship where I'm a supplier and you're the buyer. Do you think of the best business relationships you've got with other suppliers? And they're the ones to a certain extent to model. So that's what this course is about. Um, my job today really is to impart, you've all got a course manual, is to impart as much information as I can about, a lot of it comes from questions, so feel free as we go through to ask questions um, about sales and NLP and NLP sales. Because I think sales is a very noble profession. You know, there's another thing about this, if you go around, uh, I go around the country and, you know, and I, you know, when I go in to do these sales courses, I often start and say, how many people here are, are in sales? So how many people here are in sales? Okay, so I'll ask question again. How many people here are in sales? <laughs> yep. Yeah, how many people here are in sales? You're all in sales. You all are. If you're not in sales, you're not in business. If you're not in sales, you're not in life. Hypothetically, everything is a sale. Everything. So even, you know, you, even let's say you're going out of a potential you know, you're going out, I mean, this might sound a little bit clinical, but you're going out on a date. I know they don't always call it that in this day and age. Um, but you're going out on a date. You, and you like the person. It does happen, and they like you. You are selling yourself, pardon, in a nice way, as a potential partner. You are sitting down and selling the benefits of do, not doing the business. <laughs> Selling the benefits of having a relationship with you. And as a consequence, if you really like the person, you make your best of efforts. You get all dressed up in your best clothes, you say all the nice things, and you, you tell them in as subtle as way what a wonderful person you are, hoping, if you like them, that they will say, what a good partner. And that is a sale. Does that make sense? So we're always selling. And selling, I think, is a highly noble profession. Now, I meet a lot of people who are a one-person band or in consultancy or in the NLP world or therapy world, and they really think that selling is a dirty word. So anybody here has got that connotation attached to sales that it's kind of like a grimy thing that has to be done? Anyone got that kind of? It's fine. Yeah, it's grimy. Yeah. It's a grimy thing that has to be done. Well... Selling the, selling, the word to sell, the verb to sell, has its roots in a Norwegian word called selio, which is to serve. So there's a nice little reframe that if you're selling correctly, you are serving. Now, here's a key thing. I could understand people having a negative connotation to selling if they're selling a dodgy product that they don't believe in. And that, that, you know, that goes on everywhere. You know, there's some dodgy thing that someone's out there knocking on your door and they're trying to sell you. If you are proud of your product or service, 
be that a consultancy service, be it, I don't know, whatever it may be. If you are proud, you have a duty, in my opinion, to deliver it to the world if the product is good. And in doing so, you have a duty to yourself to enjoy the very, very best in life by making yourself wealthy along the line. So I think that's perfectly noble, to make yourself wealthy by delivering value to people. And the more wealthy you get, the more value you're delivering. How does that sound? Creating personal wealth for yourself because you're delivering value to other people. People buy what they want. Find something that is of incredible value to people that you can get your heart behind. Because without your heart being behind the product, it doesn't quite, you know, have you ever met somebody who's got, who, they got quite a good, kind of almost uh, cheesy pitch as it were, but you could see that their heart's not in it. The heart has to be in it. That is a key fundamental issue. So, selling is noble profession. In a, and it's also a demonstration, it's, it's, it's one of those things that is a fine art of uh, communication. Now, I've often said there are three, uh, and these are just happen to be because three I'm involved with, <laughs> fine forms of communication. Number one, that is putting across uh, advanced concepts to groups of people, is, is advanced communication styles where you can communicate with large groups of people um, and present to large groups. Number two is where you can put across the benefits of a product to a customer, to a client, they sit and listen and they buy it. That is an advanced form of communication, would you agree? Mm -hmm. The third one's communicating with teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, not just communicating to them, communicating to them and getting through. And getting more than a, uh -huh. And I'm involved with all three of these forms of communication. I'm sure there are many more. Um, but selling, you have a product. Salespeople get caught up in the features of this product. You know, here we have this wonderful gizmo with all these gizmo deedlies on it. Who gives a who? The client is only interested in what all the gizmily deedlies will do for him or her, the benefits to them. Make sense? When I was a young age, at a young age, younger than I am now, probably 10, I was on Pevensey Bay Beach, and it rained for the biggest part of this week. Never go for a holiday, well, but <laughs> it's my only experience of Pevensey Bay, caravan in the rain. You know the story, 1970s car situation, caravan site, <laughs> loads of kids on a rainy beach. So, and uh, there was this kid crying on one of the grey days that wasn't raining. And he was about my age, and I went up to him, I said, what's wrong? And in a highly clipped accent, he held up his uh, bucket. He said, I've lost my spade and I can't make sandcastles, which was a disaster. Because what good is a bucket without a spade? Now in my hand, I had a spade, which cost me 30 new pence. I said, do you want mine? His eyes lit up. 60 new pence. He paid. <coughs> At an early age, I realised the value of giving people what they want. Now, I satisfied a guy's young boy's need and made a 30 pence profit. That week, for the rest of it, I found as many rich kids as I could, found out what they wanted, and supplied them with it. All, me, all, all uh, innocent things that, you know, ranging from armbands or so forth, because they didn't want to take the walk, because Pevensey Bay Beach is a bit like Canberra Sands, you've got a beach which is miles away from anything. They didn't want to take the walk from the beach all the way up to the shop. But I didn't mind. And I paid for my, ho well, I didn't pay for my holiday, I was only 10 or 11, but I made my income through identifying what it was people wanted. And that is a key aspect of sales.